the story I'm going to tell you was taken from a Welsh fairy story from what they call the Tilworth Teg. And really, I brought it into Appalachia because I figured it would get here anyway. And I call it Jacob and the Fiddler. Jacob Reed loved to go fox hunting. Now, I'm not talking about the fox hunting with the men in the red coats and, and beautiful horses and, and herds of dogs. No, when, when Jacob wanted to go fox hunting, he would get together with his friends, usually on a warm summer evening when the moon was full. And they would get their dogs together and they would get something good to eat and something good to drink. And they would go up on the ridge to their favorite spot. They'd build a fire and then the men would sit around, the dogs would lie there with them. And after a while, they would hear the yip of a fox. And the dog's ears would spring up and the dogs would take off running after that fox. And the men would sit there and listen because those dogs would chase the fox all up and down that ridge most of the night. And each man knew exactly where his dog was in that hunt because he recognized the dog's voice. Most of the time, after the, the hunt was over, now the, the dogs would get tired of the chase and the, the fox would get tired of the chase and they would part as friends. The dogs would return to their owners. But occasionally one of the dogs might decide to stay out on the ridge all night, but no one really worried about that because the dog always came home in the morning in, in time for his breakfast. Well, this one warm summer evening when there was going to be a full moon, Jacob wanted to go fox hunting. So he gathered up his friends, and they gathered up their dogs, and got something good to eat and something good to drink. And they went up on the ridge and built the fire and settled in. And sure enough, before long, there was the yip of a fox and the dogs were off on the chase. And after a while, all the dogs came home. All the dogs except Jacob's dog. Now, most of the time he would have let the dog come home on his own, but for some reason this evening, he decided he'd go out and look for the dog himself. Now, he said to his friends, now fellas, you just go on home. I'm gonna go up on the ridge further and look for my dog. You don't worry about anything. I'll, I'll be down directly. So Jacob set off across the ridge and pretty soon he came to a large meadow. It was open and free on one end and the, the mist was starting to set in that, that night. And he started whistling and calling for his dog and he didn't hear anything. But then there was a, a voice off to one side. Did you lose something, Sonny? Well, Jacob about jumped out of his skin. He looked over and there was a strange little man sitting on a stump. And the man had an odd little hat, was kind of misshapen. And he had some short britches and he was holding a corn stalk under his chin and a willow switch in the other. Maybe my fiddle playing will, will bring him back, the little old man said. <laughs> Jacob laughed. He said, oh, you're not a fiddler. I mean, you call yourself a fiddler. You've got a corn stalk and a willow switch. You're not going to play anything with that. <laughs> I'm not so sure, Sonny. Uh, some folks say my plan can wake the dead. And he put the corn stalk under his chin and raised that willow switch and began to play. And my goodness, what a fiddle tune that was. I mean, it was toe tapping and Jacob listened to that music and he wanted to dance and he wanted to move, but oh no, he wasn't going to do that. And then the fiddle player broke into an even faster tune. And Jacob really wanted to dance. He really wanted to move. But then he looked out across the meadow. And there in the mist, he saw some people walking toward him. And out in front was, why, well, it was Aunt Ruby. Aunt Ruby, she'd been gone five years. And then he looked beyond her, and there was Will Summers. And there was, there was King Gavins. And there was Cersei Williams and folks he knew. And then Jacob remembered that the community church was just down over the hill beyond those trees. And those folks just kept walking, walking toward him and that fiddle player struck up an even faster tune. And those folks began to dance in a circle in front of Jacob. Oh, he wanted to join in, but he didn't dare. And then, then there was Aunt Ruby standing right in front of him. And she said, oh, Jacob, Dance with me, it's been five long years. So Jacob stepped forward and took Aunt Ruby in his arms and he set off dancing. And the fiddle player laughed. 
then he struck up even a faster tune and around and around they went. And, and Jacob looked at Aunt Ruby and he says, oh, Aunt Ruby, it's like old times. And the fiddle player laughed again. And Jacob looked over. And before his eyes, that funny little hat turned into two long horns on the fiddle player's head. Those odd little short trousers turned into furred legs that ended in cloven hooves. And that cornstalk changed into a fiddle of fire. And the willow switch was a bolt of blue lightning. And the fiddle player laughed. <laughs> Jacob, didn't I tell you that my fiddle player could wake the dead? And Jacob looked over to Aunt Ruby for some kind of an explanation and found he was dancing with bones. And then he was caught up in that swirling dance across the meadow. Around and around they went. And Jacob was caught in that clacking, clattering cotillion, and he could not break free. The sun was just starting to rise above the trees and the mist was burning off the meadow when Jacob's friends arrived there the next morning and they saw him standing out in the middle of that field. Actually, he was, he was whirling around by himself, dancing a mad dance. And when he saw them, he called out, fellers, help me, I can't stop. And one of his friends said, Jacob Reed, what are you doing in the name of heaven? And at the word heaven, Jacob fell to the ground and he was free. His friends ran over to him and pulled him up onto his feet and made sure he was all right. He was just very, very tired. He, he said, fellas, how did you know where to find me? And they said, well, well, Jacob, your dog came home this morning without you and we, we got really worried, so we thought we'd better come looking for you. All right, Jacob said. Let's go home. But Jacob, Jacob, they said, what happened? Fellers, if I told you, you'd never believe me. Now, let's just go on home. So that's what they did. I don't think I have to tell you that that experience changed Jacob Reed. From then on, he let his dog come home on its own. And he never ever doubted the ability of any fiddle player. Jacob and the Fiddler, I thank you for the listen. <laughs>